Right lads, I'm your host, Amanis Kebab, and welcome back to the Absolute Guide to the Internet. Why am I in the dark? Well, because in this episode, we're going to be covering creepypastas, a group term used to describe myths slash legends that are shared across the internet. Creepypastas have been around since virtually the start of the internet, and although it's hard to pin down exactly where they originated, they were commonly found on forum sites such as 4chan across the 2000s, before coming into mainstream popularity in the early 2010s. The purpose of a creepypasta is pretty simple, to scare the absolute bejesus out of anybody who reads them, and in some cases, they can be pretty good at that. So today, we're going to be looking through some of the most famous creepypastas, the stories behind them, and whether or not I deem them scary. That'll probably be most of them, I'm very afraid of the dark. Also, before we get into this, the Anonymous Kebab uh, Discord is a thing, so if you want to join that, link's up there, or down there, somewhere. I think the only right place to start is with the most famous of them all, Slenderman. Slenderman is described as being a tall, humanoid type figure, commonly seen dressed in a suit, although his similarities to a person end there. His skin is a pale, chalky white colour, and his arms stretch down to his knees. However, the scariest detail of all is his face, or more accurately, a lack thereof one. Slenderman is often seen lurking around wooded, suburban areas, with many claiming to have glanced at him standing behind a tree, ominously staring with his blank face. He is often known to try and lure away young children never to be seen again. Many of those who survive an encounter with him often experience slender sickness, a disease which drives many to violence towards others or themselves. Pictures of Slenderman often portray him in suburban areas, standing in the shade, watching kids as they play, which feeds a lot into the fear surrounding him, simply his presence ever lurking in the background. The fact that he could be standing in the tree line near your house watching you, it's not a fun thought. However, he feeds off that paranoia. The popularity of Slenderman, however, truly blew up after the real-life stabbing of a girl in Wisconsin, with the two lads who did it claiming to have done so in the service of Slenderman himself. Multiple further incidents further fueled the fear of not only what creepypastas could do to the minds of young people, but also, in some people's eyes, an indication of the real-life existence of Slenderman. The popularity of Slenderman was also further pushed by the release of Slenderman, The Eight Pages, a game that was incredibly popular on YouTube, thanks to YouTubers like PewDiePie and Markiplier. Next up, The Rake. No, not the garden tool. Him. Or more accurately, It. The Rake is once again a bald, pale, humanoid creature, hunched over on four legs, and with ominously glowing eyes. The Rake, however, unlike Slenderman, is more often found deeper in the woods, and its face instead be more akin to that of a feral animal. The rake is very animalistic in nature, often stalking its prey like a wolf, and moving akin to Gollum in Lord of the Rings. Disturbingly, many people in the early 2000s in the American Northwest claim to have seen a creature in the forests not too dissimilar to the rake, further feeding into the fear and paranoia surrounding the creature. The creature, however animalistic, is believed to be capable of speech. And there are stories of it appearing in people's bedrooms at night, only to sit at the end of their bed, before uttering its name, The Rake. I remember writing this script and thinking, hmm, what if this thing comes tonight and, uh, you know, kills me in my sleep? But uh, I guess if you're watching this thing, you know, I'm still alive, so good vibes. The Russian Sleep Experiment. Um, this one scares me in particular, because as someone who's incredibly interested in history, this thing is semi-plausible. Although, perhaps not the results of it, but still. So here's how the story goes. In the 1940s during World War II, a series of experiments were carried out by the Russian military using a chemical stimulant to see if it was capable of keeping a person awake for more than 30 days. The five guinea pigs were political prisoners, and they were to be locked in a chamber for the entirety of the experiment. The chamber contained water, food, books, and beds just kind of ironic when you think of the purpose of the experiment. The interior of the chamber was to be monitored using portholes and built-in microphones, because this was before CCTV was a thing. Now, it's going to go heavy in detail in this story, but there's a lot to it. So, in short, over the course of the 30 days, the five men are slowly driven insane, one running the length of the chamber screaming for three hours straight before he finally tore his vocal cords, another being dismembered by the other four prisoners, his body parts being scattered across the chamber, the other four themselves having torn away their flesh and skin to reveal the organs underneath. During surgery to repair their bodies, the remaining prisoners refused anaesthetic, and quite disturbingly, enjoyed the pain of the surgery. It is clear that their time in the chamber with the gas had driven them to insanity, with the prisoners constantly repeating, I need to remain awake. I need to remain awake. I need to remain awake. When an attempt was made to return the prisoners to the chamber alongside three researchers, one of the researchers drew his gun and shot the commander giving the orders, before pointing his gun at one of the remaining prisoners and saying, 
Wh what are you? His response is probably the most chilling detail of the story. Have you forgotten so easily? We are you. We are the madness that lurks within you all, begging to be free at every moment in your deepest animal mind. We are what you hide from in your beds every night. We are what you sedate into silence, and paralysis when you go to the nocturnal haven where we cannot tread. This, in my opinion anyway, is definitely the scariest part of this story, as in a sense, it is true. We all have our dark sides that we'd rather not reveal to the world. Yeah, mine's just that I unironically think that Take That make good music. Jeff the Killer. This is an interesting one to say the least. Jeff the Killer's origins vary from story to story, but the original involves Jeff moving to a new town with his parents and brother Louis. After an encounter with three bullies, Jeff viciously attacks the three, then is later attacked again by the three, who heavily disfigure his face by pouring acid and burning alcohol on it. This attack causes his signature look, his pale white skin, his lack of eyelids due to him removing them himself, and his smile. Jeff the Killer, like the rake, commonly pops into people's rooms at night, standing and watching before approaching to kill, saying his signature catchphrase, Go to sleep. Squidward Suicide. Uh, this one I'd heard about for a while, but never really delved into until now. The story goes that an intern at Nickelodeon was watching the final cut of an episode from season 4 of Spongebob due to air soon enough. The episode was called Fear of a Krabby Patty, and started off normally enough. Squidward practicing for a concert, and shouting at Spongebob. However, the episode starts to get truly disturbing when the concert starts. During the concert, the intern notices a few frames that repeat before syncing back up with the audio, which was unusual for an episode that was meant to be nearly finished. The crowd then proceeds to start heavily booing Squidward, however with more hate and malice than you would normally expect in a kids show. However, even more disturbingly, the eyes of the crowd were incredibly realistic. Still obviously CGI, but still unnerving. The scene then cuts to Squidward crying in his room. Once again, the cries are incredibly realistic, almost as if they weren't coming from the speakers of the TV, but rather echoing around the room. Suddenly a frame, just a single frame, flashes across the screen. When the intern and fellow editors go back frame by frame to see what it was, they are greeted by the disturbing image of a dead child. However, most disturbingly of all was the shadow of a photographer, leading them to believe that whoever took this photo wanted them to see it. The scene then flashes back to Squidward once again, this time with realistic blood flying from his eyes. Once again, a single frame flashes, and once again, another dead child. This repeats once again before finally, the editors call in the creator of the episode. When they sit down and watch it with the creator again, and the episode is about to end, we see Squidward once again sitting on his bed for three seconds before someone says, <coughs> before Squidward proceeds to produce a gun and shoots himself. And that's all there is to that one. Um, it doesn't have a lot of backstory like the other ones do. It's just the story. And that is all the creepypastas I have for you guys today. Of course, there's hundreds of thousands more, but I decided to just pick some of the most popular ones. Are they scary? Well, how's about you ask the pool of urine now sitting on my chair that I unfortunately can't show to you because YouTube won't be happy. Anyway, guys, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Uh, ho hopefully.